Hi there, I'm Danny Flexen for Seconds Out. Um, so news has broken this evening that Tyson Fury, uh, rather inactive recently, WBC heavyweight champion, has sent a contract a couple of days ago to arch rival Anthony Joshua, the former unified world champion, um, for a fight at Wembley Stadium in September in the UK. Um, kind of two reactions, polar opposites really to this news. One is a bit of a roll of the eyes and a bit of a shrug in that we've been here before, twice, I believe, uh, negotiations for a Fury-Joshua contest. Most recently, late last year, um, when Fury ended up fighting Derek Chisora for a third time instead of Joshua for the first. Um, and it is the same people involved in negotiations once again, we believe, uh, with George Warren negotiating with his matchroom counterparts in Frank Smith and Eddie Hearn. And I suppose on the plus side, both parties indicated that talks generally went pretty well between themselves um, last time out in November, December, and it was scuppered in the end by, depending on who you believe, either not having enough time, AJ not being fully committed because he didn't have a new coach. He's now with Derek James um, at the time. Or maybe Tyson Fury's constant uh, deadlines didn't help matters either. But relations between Smith, Hearn and George Warren actually seems to be pretty good. Um, the other thing is Fury has said in his statement that he issued today, as well as the fact that he'd sent Joshua a contract, is that he won't be putting out loads of social media videos this time to put pressure on Joshua to sign. Believe that when we see it, because Fury certainly got form for leaving that uh, those platforms behind and then coming back almost straight away. Hopefully this time he means it, he stays away from any meaningful public uh, reflection of these negotiations and they can get the promoters involved, can get the deal done behind closed doors. I mean, I suppose the flip side, because I said about the eye roll at the start, is that this is a welcome uh, relief and an antidote to what we were hearing recently that Tyson Fury is looking to do a big fight in Australia. Uh, that may still have some truth in it, but it seems more and more now like he was over there and he was generating some publicity with a bit of a local flavour. You know, he talks about fighting Dempsey McKean, who's a, another matchroom heavyweight, of course, unbeaten, but not really for anyone even close to Fury's level thus far. And then more recently, uh, Jai Opatia, the IBF cruiserweight champion, um, who would be moving up, of course, to face Fury. And while those fights may well do big business down under, we know that the biggest fight heavyweight-wise, even probably more so, I would say, than an undisputed title fight against Alexander Usyk, and we'll talk about him in a minute, uh, will be Fury against Joshua, um, because they have been rumoured to be fighting. It's been hyped up for a long time, and even though Joshua lost back-to-back -to, -back to Usyk, he's still one of the biggest draws in the world he's a natural rival very different personalities between him and fury very different fighting styles also but joshua is still very much considered in the top three or four heavyweights in the world both british wembley stadium would break all sorts of records i would imagine in terms of the gate and pay-per-views here in the uk as well um, so it just seems to make a lot of sense and i know it's been rumored for quite a while now about a huge heavyweight tournament semi-finals taking place in the Middle East in December. Most recently, Eddie Hearn told us that's still very much in play. Um, and that would see Joshua fighting Deontay Wilder, another fight that's been talked about for quite some time, and Fury Usyk uh, for the undisputed crown. However, if that's kind of bypassed to an extent, or at least um, put off by Fury and Joshua going at it first, no one's going to complain too much about that. Settles who's the best heavyweight in Britain and one of the top two heavyweights in the world um, and if Fury were to defeat Joshua he could go into an undisputed title clash with Usyk presuming he's allowed to or they're both allowed to keep their belts until then in December with an even greater negotiating position perhaps than he was already in and we know that negotiations with Fury and Joshua and Fury and Usyk haven't always been easy. Um, on the subject of Usyk I think most people know by now that Alex Krizuk, uh, Usyk's promoter, good friend of the channel, was able to win the purse bids for Usyk's WBA mandatory defence. I mean, it'll be for both belts, but that's the, the WBA called for the fight against their regular champion, Daniel Dubois. 
Uh, Frank Warren was outbid to the tune of $3 million. I think it was $8 million was the winning bid and Warren bid $5 million. And we believe, or oh, it's been reported as well, that Alex Krizuk is planning to put the show on in Poland in August. So we could easily see Usyk de Bois in August and then Fury Joshua in September at Wembley, if all being well. And the winners could then meet maybe in Saudi in December. Um, I don't know what odds you'd get for that being a Joshua versus de Bois um, fight out in the Middle East. But hey, I imagine they'd be quite wide. But anything's possible when you've got people who can punch as hard as these four men can. Um, it's weird, but Dubois could even be the biggest one-punch hitter out of the four. Um, no disrespect to Joshua there, who's a, an excellent finisher in his own right and, and a better all-round fighter, I think it's fair to say, at this stage of their careers, certainly. But the heavyweight division in recent times has flattered to deceive you know, we've seen Fury fight Wilder, but that, and, and obviously Joshua fight Usyk. But since then, bringing the top fighters together has seemed more and more problematic. We hope that this isn't just another false dawn. Um, Fury seems more positive this time, certainly seems focused. Maybe he's had a look at what else is out there. Maybe he's not convinced about the Saudi money coming through and waiting that long to fight as well. Obviously, he hasn't fought, as we said, since Chisora. Um, so he wants a big fight. He wants something to get him motivated. I'm not sure on the third fight, which is Aura would have done that. From Joshua's side, he's you know only had one full camp with Derek James um, for that fight against Jermaine Franklin, which he won comfortably, but didn't overly impress. So maybe he needs a fight of the magnitude of challenging Tyson Fury to once again be a world heavyweight champion to really get AJ's juices flowing. Um, and then on the other side, Usyk, We'll feel confident, of course, going in against Daniel Dubois, who has lost um, to Joe Joyce and is nowhere near as experienced or well-rounded as Usyk. But with his size, his athleticism and his punch power, he will feel he's got more than a healthy chance going away, even to Poland, to win that fight. So, yeah, lots to look forward to, hopefully. And stay tuned to Seconds Out. We're at the major shows this weekend in the UK, so we'll be able to speak to some of the major players, Eddie Hearn included, I would imagine, and just see what the latest is on that. I mean, it seems like we've been transported back six months or so to kind of every question about the Fury Joshua contracts and who's read it and who sent it and so on and so forth. But hopefully this time with a more favourable outcome for everyone involved. Let us know what you think. Do you think this time it's actually going to happen? Fury, Joshua, Wembley in September. And if so, who wins and how? Let us know in the comments below and uh, we'll see you over the weekend. Thank you.